Welcome to my life story. Before I get into it, I'll just say like I've always said, I've never scripted videos. So I don't know if this video is going to be 30 minutes or 3 hours. It might have to be multiple parts. I'm not really sure. But what I do know is there be some positives and some negatives in it. And if there's ever a video out there that... The sum might be worth lots and all of. This is probably it. I'm sure when I get in the video, you understand what I mean by to sum. But, well, now let's get into it, folks. As I've said in the 2023 video, I was born with cerebral palsy. And I'm not going to say exactly where I was born, like what my full name is, stuff like that, just because you're probably figure it out as this video goes. I'll put it like that. But that's also why I don't really show my face in videos and stuff like that. And also y'all probably don't want to really see me. Yeah, probably best not to. But yeah, I was born with cerebral palsy. I'll just say in the late 90s in Kentucky. And they didn't even realize they, as I would assume, the hospital and stuff, that I had cerebral palsy until I was around two years old or so. So by then, it was sort of the damage was already done type of thing. Cerebral palsy is at birth. It's not really... I don't think it was really anyone's fault. It was definitely not my parents' fault. I don't necessarily think it was the hospital's fault, but I'm not even sure if their full story has ever really been told there, so I don't know. By that, I mean, I don't even know if it was ever fully told to my parents either. I don't know, but that's not necessarily important. It's just kind of context for what's to come. So anyway, to being about two years old or so, it was found that I had cerebral palsy, so then, obviously, I don't remember it, but then I had eye surgery to do what was possible. The way that cerebral palsy is, is there's no way to completely reverse it. It's just sort of do what's possible. kind of depends on the personal circumstance to fix what's wrong. And what's wrong with me is eye damage to the point of, as of now, it's with glasses somewhere around 20 over 240-ish. Cerebral palsy doesn't get worse over time. I also haven't had my eyes checked since I was around 18 or so, so, ish. Somewhere around, it hasn't gotten any better. And that's with glasses, so I'm legally blind. And back then, apparently it was worse, but the eye surgeries, I really didn't enjoy them. Like, my parents said that I'd pretty much what they said. I just really didn't enjoy them. And they didn't do too much. Apparently they did something or another. Like it wasn't a failure or anything. But they didn't do much. And from what I can tell a lot of it was covered. But some of it wasn't. My parents weren't ever in the best financial circumstances. But because of all that they kind of went from lower middle class in a relatively rural community that's fairly small in Kentucky, so y'all can take it as you may on that one, to, well, under the poverty line. It wasn't really their faults back then, but that's kind of just what ended up happening. So, yeah, there's that. And then that, again, early 2000s for that one, I think I ended up having two eye surgeries basically didn't do much. Apparently somewhere down the line there was even a doctor that screwed up. They were trying to sell Botox to people and cerebral palsy makes your joints tight. So Botox doesn't work. And that was also around the time too of not too long after they figured out that cerebral palsy also affected my legs and such. Like before, the eye stuff was obvious, but being that young, it was kind of hard to tell as much for 
legs because, I mean, just two to three years old at that point. It's not like it doing anything really competitive to tell, oh, how good can I walk or something compared to other three-year-olds and stuff. But yeah, I'd end up that I had stuff wrong with my legs too. And there wasn't really as much to be done with that, like even surgeries or anything. That was just kind of, I wore braces like in the Forrest Gump movie, kind of just that. And that was pretty much what was to be done. Yeah, I'm pretty sure those were provided by the government, but they were pretty much just plastic braces. And that sucked. I wore them to as a teenager or so, and they helped slightly, not much, really. I quit wearing them, and I barely noticed a difference, really, but I'll get into more teenager and stuff later. For now, it puts up me up to about four years old or so. So then I started school, just typical public school. Nothing special about that, but then because I had a disability, I also got into the Head Start program, which is just a general thing to help with people in low income families or those with children with disabilities. I qualified for both there, and that was a thing, but really all that did was kind of made me notice, oh, I'm going to two schools at once. Oh, something's different, isn't it? Is at that point, I mean, I probably was aware that there was something wrong in general, but I didn't really realize what it meant. And it's kind of when I started becoming aware that it was something in general wrong. It's like when I started going to two preschools and stuff like that. and I wasn't really bullied or anything even when they were out school and all that because the being I live in isn't small, but it's small enough where it's kind of one of those things, especially with internet now, everybody kind of indirectly knows everybody to an extent, especially all the ones that go to same school and stuff, so... There's that. But, I mean, yeah, that's kind of when I started figuring stuff out to an extent. And when I was really little, I wanted to be an NASCAR driver. I mean, technically I still do now, but I realize that's pretty much impossible. But between not having the money to really get into racing and not having the eyesight to really get into racing and not having... The reflexes to get into racing, it was strike one, two, and three right there. So my parents pretty much just told me straightforward that by the time I was like five years old, nope, your dream isn't going to happen. Is that on them? Not necessarily, but yeah, so that sucked. But then, uh, I mean, before that time too, I told the story that I've been playing Gran Turismo since GT3 came out, but... When I really started getting into Gran Turismo, like, a lot, playing it as much as I was allowed to, it still wasn't much, but... Yeah, my parents didn't really let me play video games much as a kid, but then yet, I was able to trick them into... I had my own TV, but I act like it had a parental lock on it because it was a used TV, but I put the parental lock on there, so in that way they couldn't put a parental lock on it because I was the one that knew the code. I don't even remember the code now. I haven't had that TV in 10 plus years, so it doesn't matter, but still, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I could watch whatever I want on TV, but then yet they wouldn't let me help with my hand-eye coordination that sucked back then. Still, y'all can take it as you may of what it is today. And I could barely play video games. That was a thing. Yeah, that was a thing. But anyway, yeah, so... I started really getting into Grand Truismo because if I can't be an NASCAR driver, why not do the next best thing and play NASCAR video? No, those weren't all that good by then. <laughs> yeah, the NASCAR video games weren't... Yeah, they didn't really stay around too long. Grand Truismo had more longevity and then fast I started. I played NASCAR games like I, I played... NASCAR Racing 03, like the one that has all the mods and stuff, a whole heck of a heap. And I even played on PC and stuff. My dad had me a PC, really, since I was four or five or so. But it was slow, and we had barely any internet, so it wasn't much of anything, really. Like, I think I even kind of vaguely remember we still had dial-up internet to the point in which I could still remember it. It's also relatively rural, small town Kentucky, and a not good 
both fell off family, so I guess that's to be expected. I don't know. But, yeah. As of now, all this is kind of nothing hitting too hard. I mean, this is kind of when it starts hitting harder. I'll put it like that. And if y'all already think it's hitting hard at this point, well, yeah, well, here we go, folks. So then I got a bit older. Like, say, uh, let's move it now to when I was eight or nine. Again, I wasn't really bullied in school, but I wasn't exactly all too well accepted in school. Either my parents were fairly strict. I'll, I'll put it that way. If I got anything bad from the teacher at all in school, I'd get disciplined at home to the point of probably wouldn't be allowed anymore. Like spanking, washed mouth out with soap, things like that. I'm never, ever, 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 ever doing those as a parent. Just putting that out right now. Nope. Not the slightest spanking kids. Not, not, not washing mouth out with soap. Nope, not doing that the slightest. So yeah, I basically just didn't really talk in elementary school. Actually, I'll link it in the description. What I'm saying now kind of reveals more of kind of what will go into future videos and be more honest and stuff, but I'll go and link it in the description too because not too much would really change the overall explanation. I did a video quite a while ago on, on rant taking over elementary school dictatorship of how bad the teachers were on there. If y'all want to watch that, that's something too. I'll just say the teachers were way too overly strict and that's linked in the description, essentially, the teachers were in a new school, newly built school, so it was the best of the best teachers, and they could basically do whatever they want and without consequences. And yeah, that wasn't the best situation, but it's probably even worse when the teachers got me in trouble for basically other kids having me as a scapegoat because I had cerebral palsy and couldn't really fight back. I didn't particularly get bullied, but I kind of got as the scapegoat for other people, so I indirectly kind of did, and that wasn't for the best. So yeah, then I went home and all, had all that happen. Yeah, not particularly for the best. But I did what I could have playing Grand Turismo and distracting myself or stuff. I didn't particularly have friends between... People realizing, of, oh, I'm that kid, I'm the special kid, or whatever it may be. Not really mental disability, supposedly cerebral palsy. It's damaged the brain, that's what it is. So supposedly, it can have hidden effects of even if you don't realize it, or whatever. I took speech therapy, but I mean, this is also an accident that I can do. So I feel like, to an extent, that was mostly just because my mom is from South Carolina. <laughs> so that's why... I had speech therapy more than anything. I mean, y'all can tell. I may not enunciate the best. Uh, some words might not sound eloquently perfect or whatever, but um, I can ramble on. I'll put it like that. I can ramble on. I could back then, too. I was an okay kid then, but I got disciplined to the point of I didn't really ever want to step out of line no matter what. Even in best circumstances, of hurry wouldn't have been able to make too many friends because they realized I was that kid wasn't the best of circumstances. I didn't have the money to go with people when they're having fun. I didn't have the, the, well, I was somewhat afraid of even trying to do anything of the consequences of getting in trouble for trying stuff. Yeah, that just didn't go too well. And then into middle school, I've kind of hinted at this before. There was a moment when I was about 11 years old or so that pretty much changed my life forever. 11 years old, by then, the recession had hit. My parents were probably to the lowest of point of money-wise. My dad lost his job. And then he kind of went off the rails. I go and say it right now. I mean, I still love my mom. She's still a big part of my life. No disrespect to her whatsoever. She's done all she can. And then some, she deserves every good thing she can get in her life. But my dad is a different story. Hopefully he improves his life. I would have to think he watches the videos that I make now if he still has some form of, of internet, but well, this is kind of the beginning of the pretty much end with him. He's still alive, but 
of in what state I remember get to that. But yeah, this is, as I said at the beginning, kind of soft stuff. What I said recently, fairly in the middle. Yeah, this is kind of the turning point, the, ma the most major one. So, yeah. When I was about 11 years old or so, my dad was already been fired from a job for two years. He didn't really put in much effort for finding jobs. And lo and behold, I kind of figured out that he was just mooting off my mom doing all the work and he was using whatever money she made to buy at the very least marijuana i had the dog carly then my parents almost got separated because my dad didn't want a dog he wanted all the money to himself so he could buy pot didn't know that at the time figured that out a few months later but yeah we ended up getting a dog anyway because he knew that if he didn't have my mom, he would have no money to buy pot. So, he took the lesser of two evils there. Got a dog, good dog, Carly, video of her. Video actually still coming up of her, too. That's the 10 years of Grand Turismo 5 video. So, when I was 11, going on 12, I found that my dad had marijuana. I was looking for the toy for Carly. And... Where I was looking, there was marijuana. It was straight up marijuana. It was obvious. Like, I did... I had the PSAs and stuff in school. I could tell it was obviously marijuana. And it wasn't even really much bad that he was smoking marijuana. I mean, I didn't even know there was fully only him at that point. But I don't say he didn't have a job for a while. And I wasn't as much worried, oh, he's smoking marijuana. I was worried that... We're in this bad of situation and you're spending it on marijuana. I wasn't worried about the effects of, oh, your brain's going to get fried on marijuana. I wasn't thinking of that. At 11 years old, I was thinking of the monetary thing. We don't have the money for this. We really don't. And because I said that, I was grounded for pointing out that it turned out it was my dad. At that point, I didn't realize it was just him, but it was just him. And marijuana and was spending it not working and we were barely getting by I was grounded because I pointed that out at that point I pretty much just said screw it I don't want to end up like my parents again it ended up mostly being my dad on that one but still either or I mean my mom said it straightforward even well after that is do what you can and go well beyond above and beyond what we did if you can no disrespect to us or whatever meaning that she doesn't feel bad if I'm trying to become more than what she got to or whatever that's not disrespect to her she's doing all she can but for my dad I mean yeah I just didn't want to end up like him so I figured screw it I haven't been able to make friends anyway they, my parents basically didn't let me get yeah, mostly my dad on that one. By then, there were the clicks and stuff. Again, kids weren't really mean to me, but they were to the clicks and point to where even if I tried to make friends, it wouldn't have worked anyway by that point or pretty much too old. For that, middle school was a point to where like, the schools merged and stuff, so all the kids I was going to know I knew by that point. There was really no point making friends. So I just pretty much stuck my head down, worked my ass off, and that's when I started pushing myself as hard as I possibly could in Gran Turismo. That's when I started pushing myself as hard as I could in school. I'm not that smart. I'm not that talented. My reflexes suck, and there's no money to really put into a wheel, to put into a tutor, anything like that. So, I got... Well, y'all can take it as you may with Gran Turismo. That's pretty much documented from then on. Started Team Mopar not too long after that. Started with the Drifting Tunes not too long after that. GG Planet not too long after that. YouTube not long after that. Blah, blah, blah. But, yeah, I just decided I'm going to work my ass off school because I really don't want to end up at rock bottom like that. At 11 years old, I pretty much just gave up on being a kid and decided, 
Well, if my own dad isn't going to be an adult, I guess I'm going to have to. I don't really have much choice to be a kid anyway, so yeah. I didn't particularly have the normal childhood. You can call that first world problems or whatever it may be. But also, it wasn't too much longer after that point of when I did finally have surgery on my leg. I was around 12 or 13 or so, and I finally had surgery on my leg, and that didn't do too much either. And that surgery, I remember. I don't really remember the eye surgeries. I was just too young to remember them. The surgery on my leg, I remember. By that point, again, I was already being tough. I didn't want to... Well, I'll just say it straightforward. By that point, my dad was doing more than just marijuana. He was on about everything he could afford, which wasn't much, but it was more than I ever figured he was on. I found out later and he was on heroin and all that kind of stuff later on. But by that point, he was starting to be on that stuff, like 2011, 2012, somewhere around there. So... I had leg surgery. I didn't want to get addicted to the painkillers they were giving me. Because I knew what happened to addiction to people that I was related to. So I didn't want to go down that path. So basically I just didn't take enough painkillers after I had surgery. And I was in quite bad pain throughout. But I didn't say... Like they did the thing and like billing ball and jokes about it and stuff. Say that you haven't ate. Say that you have an eight after surgery, and then they give you good, the, the good stuff, the good pain med. I said that I had like a two or something, so they barely gave me anything when it was probably like a six or a seven at least. Thought through that, the surgery didn't do much. I had my Achilles tendon surgery on, you know, like the thing with the sports athletes where they're out for two years or whatever. I had that, and y'all may be wondering, how did I afford that? Well, it was through Shriners, the ones that do it for free. So, yeah, I got lucky enough to get into that, of something that could work, and it kind of worked. I mean, it made my foot overall slightly more stable and stuff, but it didn't reverse the fix of cerebral palsy. Again, that's impossible for now. And... Yeah, I was in quite bad pain. I didn't want to take the painkillers because I didn't want to get addicted to them like my dad. And y'all can probably see where this story is going. My dad took the painkillers. Yeah. He took my painkillers when I was in actual pain. And I couldn't really say or do much about it. So then a little bit later on, my grandma got Alzheimer's on my dad's side of the family. That was a thing. So he couldn't help that, but then we had to take care of her. That was stressing everyone, not gonna lie. That was also stressing my dad, too. He did stuff, to an extent, to take care of her. Although my mom and myself did way more. I mean, it's still ultimately his mom. I'm not gonna act like that wasn't a stressful situation for him. It obviously was. And I had just pushed him completely to... And Amber House said, I thought that when I was 11 years old, it was rock bottom. Then I was going into high school, and oh, oh, oh boy, that wasn't even close to rock bottom back when I was 11 years old. Then, not even close. Not even remotely. My dad was pretty close to death because his kidneys failed from doing all the drugs. He still did drugs later, and he downright went crazy. Again... He, nothing could be done about my grandma getting Alzheimer's. That was a sucky situation. So obviously they were stressed there, not denying that one. But he definitely didn't take the stress in a positive way. There's no doubt about that one. So yeah, he just went absolutely crazy. And did some stuff that I'm not necessarily going to mention because... I'll just say after this, I thought that he deserved the rest of the realistic amount of life that he was going to be alive for in prison afterwards for it. Way more than just doing the drugs, I'll just say. A lot of violence, not necessarily towards me. There was emotional violence towards me. I'll say this one straightforward. 
You just said straightforward to me and quite often that I'm only good when I'm asleep. That's what I'm willing to say. That's what I'm willing to say. And yeah, that, that didn't end up being for the best. So, yeah, my mom and I ended up splitting from him. He took care of his mom, who still had Alzheimer's and stuff, to quote-unquote the best of his abilities, which was basically living in a tent for a while, and then he ultimately lived with his brother, who wasn't exactly well off either. His brother was like 16 years older than him or something like that. I guess he's still alive now. I haven't seen anything different. But he'd been an alcoholic his whole life, so that wasn't the best situation either. So, yeah, I didn't see my dad again. After that, and that's probably what I prefer, really. Probably what I prefer. He hasn't seemed to have changed his life any. That's, that's for sure. But I sure changed my life. I started even before that. I saw that my dad was on a downward spiral over half my life ago and pretty much just gave up being a kid. So I don't end up like him. But, well, this is kind of more going towards I don't or do or however with him. Later on, a little bit into high school. Now, remember how I said before that there wasn't really too much money being helped with the eye surgeries that I had, and there wasn't really... I don't know the full story of originally, like, when I was born. All that. I'll just say the government was kind of screwing me over throughout my life. I mean, there's a lot of people who are able to get cerebral palsy settlements and stuff and have a livable income because of that. We weren't so lucky. I'm pretty sure it's too late to even look into that now. But anyway, where I'm getting into that is my mom had to provide for herself, but that was actually slightly easier. Because before she was providing for herself, me, and my dad as well, because he didn't have a job, and he was buying marijuana, and who knows what else more. Later, we found out some heroin in there, too. I don't know the full timeline on what drugs he was on when and all that. I just know a lot during a lot of time. So, there's that. Me, where, where I'm getting, I'm working my ass off in school. I was able to get to the beta club. I was able to be a patrol leader in my Boy Scout troop. Doing all I possibly could. I mean, there's even stories of Boy Scouts, too. I guess I'll go ahead and get into it. It's not as important, but... I might as well open the full can of worms, I guess. Blah, blah, blah. However you want to wear that. I didn't want to do Boy Scouts. My dad wanted me to do it because I wasn't physically able to really compete realistically for sports. And he saw video games, even though that helped my hand-eye coordination and gave me something that I was willing to put effort into as a waste of time. And bad for me. Playing Gran Turismo. Yeah. You don't take it as you may on that one. But. Yeah. So he forced me to be in Scouts. And. I mean it's Boy Scouts. There's hiking in there. By the time. I had leg surgery. I could barely even do the hikes. I was barely even able. To go more than. Maybe 10 steps on, like, dirt with, like, rocks and stuff. I was hiking in Red River Gorge or wherever. It was hiking trails and such. Without falling down and being in quite bad pain. I got up. I still did it anyway. I wasn't allowed to complain. So, yeah, I was in pretty bad pain there. Could barely move. Noticeably limping. And I didn't want the... Other version of that. I didn't want the consequences of saying that was going on. So y'all can take that one as you may. And so I kept going. I was in Scouts till I was 15-ish. As patrol leader, I probably 
that actually technically no I couldn't I, in order to get Eagle Scout you had to bike like 20 miles or something I couldn't really ride a bike anyway I just not coordinate any of stuff didn't I obviously knew how just I wasn't really coordinated enough to pull it off so I probably couldn't even fin finish Boy Scouts Anyway, the point I'm making about it is I, I just worked hard even though I didn't want to. I didn't have friends. I didn't have fun, really, other than video games and TV and such. Again, I was just smart enough to figure out how to have fun with TV. I'll just say late night HBO was something back then. <laughs> That's for TV. And that was back then as of talking about like the first TV that I got. So yeah, that was a that was a thing. My parents didn't have much money, but they they put they spent the money for HBO. Anyway, that can be a story for another day too. Maybe that's one for the special Titan channel. We'll see on that. But the point I'm making is, I just continued to work extremely hard. I was in scouts, even though I didn't want to. Still, even for a while after, split up from my dad. I was even in beta club. I got good enough grades for that in beta club. Literally, the point of Beta Club was you clean up the trash after a football game. For being smart and all that, your reward for being smart and getting to this exclusive club and stuff that you needed at least a 3.5 GPA to have was to clean up other people's trash. In a lightning storm. There's no way to prove this, but yes, folks, that was one of the things we actually did in Beta Club is they had us clean up the trash after a football game in a lightning storm. Yeah, no one got hurt from that, but I was pretty much done with Beta Club after that one. I didn't like that. Not too long after I was done with Scouts, too. After I had leg surgery, I was far under, like, behind, however you want to word it. The people that were in the same age group as me, too, so I had to work on, like, different merit badges and stuff that everyone else in my age group was doing so there really just wasn't much point in me staying in scouts. They might a gentleman's agreement if I stayed in it until I was 18 gave me Eagle Scout because there was no physical way I could have surely gotten it but I don't I, I didn't want to get something just handed to me that kind of goes into later bets too. But yeah anyway so kind of the ultimate point again I don't script my video that the government's screwing me over, where I was working so hard in school that I was on pace to get at least a 4.0 GPA in high school, at least. I got a 28 on my ACT, and on pace to fairly easily get a 4.0 GPA in high school. And in fact, I had two different chances to get it. One chance, I just... The teacher wasn't very good. And it was a math class in which literally the deciding factor on whether I was going to get a 4.0 or not were two different things. One of them was to make a kite because it was geometry, make a kite, fine, whatever. But they had everybody take the kite out on a day where there was no wind, so the kites didn't fly. Well, part of the grade was the kites flew. There were like three kites that flew. All of them, they just had helium balloons connected to them. I would have known you'd rather cheat and put helium balloons connected on the kite. Then I would have had my grade up. I would have just barely had an A for that class. That Back then, you had to have a 92 to have an A and a 83 to have a B and on down like that. I and mean, every other thing in every other state that I know of was 90, 80, 70, 60. So I probably would have had like a 4.3 GPA coming out of high school if it was the actual grading system that every other part of the world uses. But, well, my backwards ass school used it. Whatever. When, the year that I took the ACT, my school... Finished 108th out of 120 counties in Kentucky. And Kentucky was 49th out of 50 in the nation. So I quite literally went to one of the worst schools in the nation. And there's no denying that whatsoever. I literally went to one of the absolute worst schools in the nation. And in freshman year, there was a thing with the kite. That if I would have done, I would have had enough for an A in that class. And at the end of the year, at the very end of the year, quite literally came to down to the very last minutes of school into even after that through the individual education plan that I have that I fought for that I was willing to do what I could to keep 
I had extended time to finish assignments or whatever it may be. There was an assignment that I, on the very last day of school, was willing to stay after on the very last day of school, freshman year of high school, in order to finish because that's how it went for the other times. You're allowed like study hall or whatever and then take a test later on of like an individual section of a class. It was called standards based grading. Y'all can do your own research on that. But that was an absolutely terrible system because if you got any part of the question wrong, not even the answer to the question in math, like there's the whole rundown of stuff and the formulas and all that. If you got any of that wrong whatsoever, it's automatically down to 90. And again, a 92 is an A. A 90 is a B. And their stupid way of... And seems like only my county that did it. So, yeah. I was willing to stay after the very last day of school to do the test. That even just that test alone, even after the kite thing, that if I would have put balloons in my kite, I wouldn't have had to worry about that. And the teacher didn't let me. Even though it was quite literally in my individual education plan that she legally had to let me do it, I was even willing to do it on the very last day of school. And she legally didn't... If, like, I probably could have pressed some type of charges on her. But her own daughter was in the same class that I was in. So I was the better person there. I, her daughter was in the room when that happened, and I, I didn't... I... I... I didn't push that. Probably in hindsight, I, I should have pushed harder than that. But, I mean, I complained nicely, and I said that, I mean, it's a role. I have to be able to do it. And there were other people in Finnish sent up their stuff, too. Like, if they were able to get to there before, like, the very end of the school day or whatever, they had time to finish or whatever. But because I wasn't in, like, that sex in the hall when the class ended that day, I didn't get there till like, five minutes after the school day or whatever because I had to walk from one side of school to the other whatever it may be, so, she didn't let me start it, or whatever, so, yeah, I mean, I was mad, and ultimately, I slammed the door fairly loud, coming out of class, people could tell I was mad, but I probably should have pushed harder there, but I didn't realize that it was gonna end up, that my final GPA, throughout all high school, was a 3.99, not a 4.0, a 3.99, so that screwed me over for getting the keys money from the government. The government was screwing me over for getting cerebral palsy settlements and stuff, which you can do your own research, that's the thing. And then the local school system screws me over from getting more keys money that I obviously deserve. And then there was yet another situation where that happened too. Senior year of high school, kind of the same situation I had the in my IP to be able to have extended time to do stuff. It was a writing assignment, and I'm just not all that fast of a typer. I'm not all that fast of a writer, so I truly didn't need it. I was in AP English. I mean, senior year AP English, the hardest English class school offered, and then like eight days left of school. There was something that I was like three-fourths of the way done. The day of, I said, uh, can I please have extended time? I rarely ever use the extended time. If I didn't have to use it, I didn't use it. Wasn't like something that I did frequently or anything. And she said yes, so whatever. But lo and behold, because that was like the third period class I had that day. And it, there was eight classes. I was able to actually get it done, just miscellaneous throughout a finish and other assignment throughout class or whatever. They get it done before the school day in it. So I figured, oh, I'd be proactive, help the teacher. I'll go ahead and turn in anyway at the end of the day. So I gave it to her after class ended, like, my, I was actually closer there than I was to, like, the math class before I was saying leaving school. So I got there only, like, two minutes after school ended for the day, and she was still there. I gave it to her, and I said, oh, I, I had time to go and finish this anyway. Here you go. Hopefully this helps you be able to grade it on time after the rest or whatever. And she said, great, thanks. Yeah, that'll let her help. Lo and behold, she didn't even have it in a record that she got it. When I was in there, there were still a few kids in the classroom, too. So they saw that happen. I don't know if they were paying attention, but they were in the room when it happened. So there's that. And I'm pretty sure they're supposed to have, like, cameras and stuff in the classroom, too. So, lo and behold, she said she didn't get it. So, because that counted as a zero, that basically 
screwed me over if I had like a 93 or something in the class to, uh, I was well under an A. And that right there too screwed me out over keys money. Granted, if like both of those classes went my way, it still would have been a 4.0. So it's not like it would have bumped me up to even more keys money after that. But even if one of those situations went my way, I would have gotten extra money throughout the time. So the government screwed me over for getting cerebral palsy stuff. Again, there's that whole situation. Didn't know until I was around two years old or so. It's not like my parents really were able to afford a lawyer to fight it and all that. So I'm not really sure whose fault that is. But then even the own, own school system that I was one of the top few in screwed me over getting it. There's also a video like I mentioned before I ran for class president. That's not particularly important. I might do a video in and of itself there because it's fairly interesting. So there's that too. So yeah. Basically my parents never had the money. My dad was taking money away when he was on who knows what drugs. Definitely marijuana. Found out later heroin. Stuff like that. Both my mom and I were working their asses off to even stay alive pretty much. I knew that if I didn't get good grades in school... I basically wouldn't have a future. I basically was at that point just keeping the good grades and all that for family. I I wasn't sure what I was actually capable of, but I figured I might as well try to at least keep the morale high. Well, I went to college. as an engineering scholarship. In high school, senior year for engineering, I got the highest final test score of anyone in the entire class of a whopping seven people. There's kind of your general size of school there. That was a smaller class than average, but yeah. Senior year, AP Engineering had seven people in it, and I got the highest grade of all of them. And when I went into engineering in University of Kentucky, at that point I had a full scholarship, even had a little bit of extra money going into college. I was basically duped trolled, lied to, have you want it. Well, my high school saying that, oh, I'm definitely capable of doing this. You don't have to worry whatsoever. Now, basically, their curriculum for engineering had nothing to do with what was taught in college, and the math bit of it, I knew nothing of. Math in general was sort of my worst subject in general, but I'm not even making this up. There are five different grading systems back when I was in high school for math and the four years I was in high school. Standards-based grading. Again, the story that I already told, that was absolutely terrible. Here's a story, too, of my principal. They'll probably get its own video because it's actually kind of more funny than it is kind of falls in line with all this, but I'll probably get a story, too. Probably I'm rant to continue with the, like, elementary school one. Do one for high school, too, and maybe middle school or C on that one. But anyway, there's that, so, yeah, basically I wasn't capable of realistically doing anything. I was kind of right on the edge of passing and failing, but I was working so hard. I've said in other videos and stuff, that I, I, before I've worked hard enough to where I was about passing out and stuff. That was basically my life, freshman year of college, is I was either sleeping or studying, there was no in-between. I'll be honest, I did go home to my house on the weekend, like, living with my mom, but more than anything, that was just to mentally cope. That, uh, if I were to have stayed in school then, I just would have worked to nothing. I would have kept on working, not been able to, to pass. So I, I wouldn't have had a weekend. I would have worked myself to pretty much... Not death, but just pointless. I wouldn't have been able to pass no matter how hard I was working there, so I had to switch my major. I switched my major in ICT. I think I've said that before I graduated in ICT. That ultimately went fine, but switching into ICT a year later meant I was a year behind, and my uh, counselor for for that, just a general student counselor, or however you want to word that, talk to getting all that set up, advisor, counselor, whatever. I think there's different terms of it depending on where you go. 
said that I could do 12 credit hours with this major a semester and we would keep all the scholarships and stuff. So that's what I did because I was trying like 18 or something with engineering and that I just couldn't do. I was, I, it, it was, it was not fun at all. Freshman year, I say you're supposed to party and stuff freshman year and worry about the effects of that later. I was the complete opposite, like literally the polar opposite of partying stuff. I basically worked myself to having a worse hangover and sadness than a party that went wrong. Yeah. It wasn't fun. And it's not like it was easy after I switched to major either. Because I switched to major and I didn't have as good a grade. I didn't have bad grades really, but I didn't have enough to keep the scholarships from being the best of the best and stuff for one semester. That ended up being money that kind of later on I got screwed over too because I took a private loan for that because that one had the least interest at the time. So yet again, in hindsight, I ended up getting screwed over from the government because y'all can do research if you want. Like at this very moment, there's a, a program going on to get... Uh, federal student loans up to ten thousand dollars revoked, but where I got a private one, it doesn't work for that one. I'll see what I can if there's anything whatsoever I can get for that, but probably not. And so, yeah, yet again, kind of screwed over by the government. I didn't get the keys money, I didn't get through with policy settlements, which that could have been way more than keys ever was. Just I'm not certain the likelihood of that. Likelihood for keys was 100% if the teachers were honest and did their job. And then, in hindsight, like literally learning this in the past few days, I ended up being screwed over with the student loans. So, I mean, yeah, I did fine with ICT. I was able to actually graduate on the dean's list, but I also graduated right when COVID hit, too, so I finished all my final classes and stuff online, so that helped a whole heck of a heap, not gonna lie. Oh, uh, that one, that helped. And then there's also the story with the internship that I had to get, too. I was actually able to use Racing Bros. I think I mentioned that before. I can do a story on that if you want. But, lo and behold, too, because COVID hit, and maybe to an extent, it's hard to tell. I'm still I'm fully sure on it. I'm pretty sure... There's some shadiness in there, but I'm probably not going to do me any good to pursue it now. They, I was basically done with college, like, right when COVID hit. So just a typical four years or whatever. But they made it to where I technically had to go another year to finish, like, electives and stuff because COVID or something. I'm still not 100% sure on that. I think it was a combination because I switched it in a major a year later. My advisor said that I could took take 12 credit hours to keep scholarships and yes, once I got grades up higher of the semester or later or whatever, I kept the scholarship. So technically my advisor wasn't lying but ultimately that means I had to do more classes that didn't matter later on. Like literally between 2020 and 21, I was done with anything important but I just had to do jump through hoops or whatever to be officially done, and then that cost a few thousand dollars more. It was online classes. So it was way cheaper. And I still got money from, like, Disability Resource Center and stuff, but it wasn't much. Like, back when I was full-time in physical school in a dorm, it would only cover, like, maybe one eleventh or something of the total cost, so it didn't matter. Too much nice to have, but didn't... Not much of anything there. So I still got the money from this ability resource center, but not from the university that cost a few more thousand dollars too. So yeah, indirectly the government kind of screwed me over there too, because if I was told in high school, I wouldn't be able to do engineering. I would have just switched to ICT to begin with. And then I wouldn't have had the bad grades for like that one semester when I was attempting engineering. And again, the grades were already bad. I think I had pretty much a 2.0 GPA even. And then I would have been able to get done on time and less costs there and all that. I'm getting to the point of saying the government stuff over and over as it goes. I'll get to that in a bit. But during that time, too, is when I figured out that library was a thing. 
So I was able to make some cryptocurrency. And I, I mean, y'all know the library. I've discussed that since 2019. But once COVID hit and all that, that made it to where Grand Turismo actually got paired with the Olympics. So by the time I was already making about the best point of that time of cryptocurrency relative to like his value and stuff ever for now, hopefully not surely ever, but ever at this moment, roughly then ish. And then it was announced that Grand Turismo was pairing with the Olympics. So I figured, oh, well, this actually might be a smooth transition. If I can actually make money, I'll be a cryptocurrency, which Y'all can make your own assumptions of cryptocurrency, but still some form of money to livable degree. And there's actually statistics out there, and I think I've done videos on it, said it before. There's a point where I was making a slight over a thousand dollars a month doing it. If I were to have cast out, and I didn't cast out. So, yeah, I mean, that was in 2020 before, or slightly into 2021, too. Before GT7 came out, so you'd think by now I'd be making more because it's the newer game. Theoretically. So, yeah, and in a fairly small town like this, money goes pretty far. Not as far enough in place and blah, 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 but still on average, all that. So, yeah, I figured that'd actually be a smooth transition if I can actually do this as a career and I'd still be using my major to an extent. As I said before, it's explaining information by communicating it, obviously. I'm communicating right now. And then that information is on technology as Gran Turismo or whatever. So I'm using my major, doing it. I mean, there was actually a class that mentioned some cryptocurrency in there. Somewhat. The bulk of the cryptocurrency stuff I learned on my own. I still don't know. A lot of the other ones, I know LBC, and that's the one I need to know. So there you go. But yeah, my major helped me a bit of going into this. But ultimately, I mean, again, I had the channel before I was even in college. Y'all can make your own opinions of how much it actually made a difference. So there's that. But whatever, I don't really think that college was a complete waste or anything. But it cost a lot of money even getting, working my ass off, keeping the full scholarships is tough to the absolute very best of my abilities and then some. And yeah, so... That was a thing. I'm not necessarily saying college is a scam or anything, but I'm not saying that it was the best choice either. I don't know. It, I'd say it's too early to know for absolute, sir. But the point that I'm making is that right now, library is being sued by the government. Maybe now there's some ties in there. The government just seems to directly or indirectly hate me. <laughs> Y'all can do all, all your conspiracies and stuff with that. I don't care. Like I said, this is what I have to do in order to survive, pretty much. So say what you want. I'm still going to be here anyway. Unless the site loses the lawsuit. It shouldn't. Put it like that, it should but anyway, yeah, the government's been screwing me over time and again. But all in all, I still have faith in the government. Because, well, I mean, there's no denying cerebral palsy. There's effects. While the cerebral palsy itself doesn't get worse. If you're still watching at this point, like, wake up. If you've fallen asleep or whatever. I know that's been almost an hour, but here's... Do some juicy bits and all that. I mean, it's straightforward. There's plenty of research on it. It's affecting me. Cerebral palsy has damage to the body over time by just putting stress in the body. And like I said, there's mental stress, a whole heck of a heap. Physical stress, more than I would have liked. And yeah, it's something. There's two reasons I don't really sew my face in video. One... Because I might be enough removed to, of how my dad knew me in high school that he may not recognize me now if he sees me in public. But if I saw my face in these videos, he would. So there's that. And two, y'all probably don't want to see what I look like right now. 
There's research if you want to do it. Cerebral palsy at times can cause premature aging, and I'm pretty sure I'm starting to get that. All in all, I'm pushing right now because my, my, I'm not, it, it may very well not. I don't know how much time I have to be able to push and physically be able to do it. It might be five years, it might be 50 years, I don't know, but I don't want to waste the time either. If I just sit here idly by and not do anything, then if something ever does happen, it might be too late for me to do anything then. Positive. So as of now, I'd rather fight while I'm somewhat physically able to, because there was a time where I was even more physically able to than I am now. I can still walk. It's not the funnest thing to I don't need necessarily anything to help me walk, but it, I'm also ornery. I'm also competitive. <laughs> I'll say this, the Optimist Club video might get its own, or I kind of already hinted, that might get its own video. I mentioned before I got the Optimist Club reward. They're kind of go into when I ran for class president and stuff, all those kind of linked together. That'll probably get its own video but ultimately yeah I'm, I'm stubborn I'm competitive I'm ornery I'm, I'm I'm a fighter I've learned that through family mostly my mom you have to fight to stay alive at this point and yeah I'm, I'm willing to do that I'm I'm willing to put myself through mental or physical or whatever it takes harm's way to do it and I know it's straightforward in a lot of ways it doesn't look like I put too much effort into the videos but I mean, there were points where I pushed myself to and beyond. I probably should have even with Grand Turismo. I've changed my sleeping schedule around to be able to, like, get the daily, weekly now. Yeah, you knit it back when it was daily. At, like, 3 a.m. and stuff to do those, like, right when it came out and stuff. I pushed to the point of, I've had blisters on my hands and stuff. I pushed to the point where I could barely even keep my head up without falling asleep. I mean... I've done all this for a video game, but now that the video game is pretty much my livelihood, for better or worse, we'll see. I'll try and make it better. Yeah, I'm definitely willing to push now. Because later on, I might not get that choice. Again, it might be nothing. People have been saying before, that, oh, I'm clickbaiting and stuff now. I don't know the future. In, in hindsight, yeah, I might be clickbait, but uh, I might end up being right. I don't know the future yet. I don't know. I hope the future goes really well. This ends up being clickbait. doesn't end up mattering. But I don't know. So I'm saying it now. Is ultimately... I've done this throughout life too. As I said, I didn't particularly make friends because to an extent I was too scared to. To an extent I probably wouldn't have been able too much anyway. If having cerebral palsy and all that. Not much money. That didn't help either. But I've always gone kind of by the thing of I'm going to be honest about the positives and the negatives, and if you still want to stick by me after all of it, then I know you're loyal, and I know you're actually wanting to do it. That's just sort of how I am. That's how I've always been. So that's why I'm doing this. If Polyphony Digital, if Paralympics, if people are trying to fight to help either or, or both, however it may be, want to stick me with me after all this, I'm... Very much thank you all for that. And I get why some people were mad over this. I get my... Some people were critical over all this. I, I very much understand. But... I have to be doing this at this point pretty much. Physically, mentally, monetarily. So... Now we're here. Ultimately, I'm doing this for y'all. But, I mean, something has to be said about myself. If I'm doing this for... Y'all, and yeah, this is, this is that. I really didn't even go into the deepest, darkest of the dark, really, of a lot of it. Either, so, yeah. I'll put it this, like this. This is my life story. And I kind of summed up how my dad's life story ended up going. I might do... do own video for my mom and what she's put herself into to work and all that 
I gotta work as hard as I can, but ultimately she's worked harder and affected more people and all that. So it's kind of gone full circle. She said to try to go above and beyond what we, as in my parents, were able to do. And no disrespect there or whatever. Like, they won't feel bad if I'm trying to push above and beyond that they did. But as of now, I'm not so sure I'm ever going to be able to do as much as she's done to a lot of different people. And... I'll probably do a more positive video about her. I'm not so sure how many people are going to care about that, but I feel like there's correlation there. And to an extent, it leads to me. I've said it before, too. There's situations and other people involved directly with me and stuff and being able to record and all that. There's all that in there, too. So it does somewhat tie in to me. But I feel like that's going to be an important video to make, too. I'll see how it goes. And when to make it again, there's the law to 2024, really, for the Paralympics and all that. But, I mean, if y'all have any questions, leave it in the comments, whether it's on YouTube. I'm uploading this to YouTube. I mean, it's a direct successor to 2023 video, the one that I said that I was always going to upload anyway. If it was going to happen, then it happened. So, yeah. Odyssey. G GD Planet, Reddit, wherever this ends up going. If people want to repost it wherever, that's fine, too. I mean, I, I don't know what the future's going to hold. I don't know how long I'm going to be in the future for. Hopefully everything works out. I don't know if it will. I'm lucky that things are even working out right now. Again, like stuff with my mom and all that, that... I can even do this at this very moment. And I don't even know how long that will last on a small scale. So. Yeah, now now we're here. And I don't know what's next. But I'll fight like hell to make it as good as possible for as long as I can. And that's pretty much the choice I have in the matter. I'm not asking y'all to donate if y'all don't have the means do if y'all really want to, that's great. But y'all may have noticed too, I'm not plugging any, I'm not plugging a Patreon or anything like that. I may or may not make one. I, I don't know. I'll see how stuff goes. I mean, if it's straightforward, if more money helps with getting the Paralympics going and stuff, then yeah, I'll do it for that because it helps a lot of people in there. But if it's mostly just for me, I'll see on that. If it has to be done, like, I'm to the point of literally completely running out of money and I'm going to starve to death. And then, yeah, I'll start a Patreon. But There's always the LBC if you want to gift that. Realistically, I have more LBC than most people. I'm very, very much thankful for that, even of how low of value it is right now. I've not put a cent into any of this, and... Y'all just through watching the videos and donating and stuff, LBC, donating LBC, and you don't have to donate the real money. But, uh, yeah, of all that, I made my channel as popular as it is now. I'm going to do what I can with what there is to make other people more popular, reposting videos and stuff like I've done, getting Grand Tours on the Paralympics, all that. I would certainly make a video about getting Grand Tours on well, the Paralympics, like, what you can do to help with that. Just again, with the law and all that, I don't know when really the best time to post that video is. It might be a few days from now. It might be a few months from now. I don't really know. I'll kind of just play it by ear with that. If, if something absolutely stupid happens that PD does, then that affects the timeline. I'll put it like that. I don't have too much control over that one. But, yeah. There's my life story. Again, I might do a video for my mom because I feel like it's worth doing. If y'all have any questions in general, there's that too. But y'all can probably tell my voice is somewhat starting to go out and like emotionally too. I might be slightly sounding different than at the start. But yeah, folks, I mean... Oh, I'm being as genuine as I possibly can be with all of this and 
I'm not trying to scam anyone. I'm not trying to clickbait anyone. Ultimately, I'm doing this for y'all. If I can get enough money to succeed from this, great. But I don't know if I can. I don't know how long I have to try and can or have you want to word this. I mean, this might not work out. But, I mean, this I've been playing Gran Turismo for going on well, over 20 years at this point. Competitively, over even 10 years. So, yeah, this seems like the best path for me, and if this doesn't work, well, this is my best path, but I'm going to do everything I possibly can to make it work, I'll put it like that. I've done it in the past, now there's as much or even more motivation to do it now, so... I'm doing it. Despite the criticism, despite if people want it or not, despite if corporations want it or not, I'm going to do everything I possibly can that I can't anymore. And it could be September if library loses the lawsuit. It could be 50 years down the road. But I'll be there as long as I can. And hopefully y'all are benefit from it. Yee!